Hi, Internet viewers, back again. Uh, what we're going to make today is the grasses that we see on the piece. It comes up here, and it comes over here. And I do a small one, and I do a larger grass. So what I'm going to do is I'm using copper uh four, 40 gauge copper which is really thin and i cut it off of a sheet i usually have a sheet of it and what i'm going to do is i'm going to get uh, a marker and uh i try to make this at least on the first go around at least about six inches long so that's what this is so i'm going to come in i'm going to start down the bottom and mark this and come up to a point up here. Let's see if I could do this handily. And what we're doing is like, we're trying to make a, a, a grass leaf, okay? It's narrowing as it gets to the top and it widens and then comes back in again on the bottom. I'm gonna heavy this side up again. It looks like it didn't take it too well. So what you want to do is you want to make two of these and then you also want to cut out uh, ones that are about, oh, I would say uh, maybe two inches long, okay? But right now I'm just going to show you the larger one. So what you have is you have an outline of bait basically this grass that's growing, okay, that we're going to try to make out. And I'm going to get a pair of scissors, and this cuts very easy. So I'm going to follow that line and cut right on up and go to a point up here. Okay, and I'll save this piece for the second one. And then I'm gonna come back on this side and I'll cut this out. Uh, try to get back on the line. There we go. And you wanna to try to get a nice even cut right on down. Okay, like so. Now, what I'm going to do is get a pen and just straighten it out. It'll get curly here. Uh, make sure you don't have any burrs because that could bite your skin. This is so thin. It could be razor-like somewhat. So uh, the other thing I do, you can see it curling. So uh, I'm just going to uh, twist this a little bit like this. And then I'm going to straighten it out. But try to sort of get it to the shape I'm going to look for at the end here, but this, this all gets maneuvered. So you see, it's like a curly type. So I'm just going to straighten it out just a little bit. And this sort of reminds me, uh, I, I have tropical fish and, uh, the one plant that grows in, in fresh water, uh, it's called a corkscrew valicinaria, and, and it's just that. It, it's like a corkscrew type grass. So we're, we're going to try to make it look like that. Okay, so I have this. And like I said, I'm going to do two of these, but I'm just going to show you this one. And then I'm going to do one that's only about uh, maybe two inches long. And uh, here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to get a brush. Let's see. Let me grab this over here. Dab bad wall. Uh, I'm going to use a sealer on the metal because it tends to be able to uh, hold the paint. It's hard sometimes uh, when you're just painting directly on to that that it doesn't adhere well 
the paint, the acrylic paint. That's what I'm using, acrylic paint all the time on these. And uh, so what I use is a sealer. This happens to be a Joe Sanyo all-purpose sealer, but you could use uh, even, uh, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of the medium. It's a, it's a, uh, there's a gloss medium and a, a matte medium uh, in uh, acrylic paint uh, vehicles uh, of uh, stuff you put in the paint. This here happens to be a sealer, but uh, I just come in, take the lid off. I'm gonna get a little bit of water on my brush just a little bit so I can pick up some of this. This is getting old because it's usually uh, real watery. So I'm going to come in and paint this. I may straighten this out a little bit and then go back and corkscrew this later. But anyway, let me get a little more water into there. Get some of this on here. And I'm going to paint this. There you go. Now it's starting to coat. You can see it gets like a frosting on it. And that's what I'm trying to achieve is the is the frosting. Which means it's been coated. Because the metal's usually shiny to start the copper. So this is uh, one way you can tell if you got everything. It's a coating on it. So I'm going to do this, and this, get in there, and I'm going to come up. Let me get a little water into this mix. There we go. And I don't want to leave a lot of excess on here. I'm trying to just coat it, and you want to get the edges as well. And if it beads up uh, because you have too much water or something like that, come back and coat it again. Uh, one coat usually does it, but sometimes you have to come back at it. And I uh, almost have this. I'm going to grab the bottom now because this you won't see when we anchor it down, but I'll get the top. Top's very important because it's going to be more visible when we finish this piece. Okay, so we're almost there. You get a nice even coat, and you can see if I had too much water and it beat it up, it doesn't, it doesn't coat well, so I'll just get a little bit more and try to get the sheen off of the copper. Check it out. That looks pretty good. I still have a spot. Let me just come in here. And again, like I said, I don't want it too heavy. I want it to be able to just be a thin coat. And if you got a spot or two that misses, I think the paint will still grab it. But... The idea is to, now, all I'm going to do is get some container that, I don't want to lay this down on paper because it could attach itself to the paper. So I get like a plastic cup and just lay it on there. And I could see it's beating up over here. So I'm going to come back and touch up. And you, you want to let this sit and dry completely. Now so I could see it's building up here. So I'm going to thin it out where I can. And then I'm going to put it on here, and I'm going to let it sit. So I'm going to put this off to the side. Now, in the meantime, while we're waiting for that to dry, I already prepared a couple other uh, pieces. And here they are here that I made which are the six inch ones, and it's already dried already. And I also made some that were shorter. And again, you wanna make this 
appropriate to the length and, and the point and not as heavy as the the larger one is if like, you you know, you just saw grass growing in your yard or something like that. And it's similar to that. Uh, I'm going to get a paint tray and we're going to mix some paints. I'm going to get a paint tray like this. These are already dried. I let them sit overnight and I wanted to show you on the one how I cut it out, and like I said, uh, I do use the aluminum sheet. It's very thin, okay? It's not heavy at all, and I can make another one out of this, and this would be the six-inch one, and then uh, you can get smaller pieces and, and about two inches long for... Uh, the other two uh, pieces that I want to put into the setting. So I'm going to get two colors that I'm going to mix in here. This one is sap green. Again, I'm using acrylic paints in, in the process all the way through here. And I'm going to use a little uh raw sienna okay you only need a little bit and then i'm going to put just a little bit of water in here i'm going to try to leave this on the heavy side and then i'm going to try to do some wet blending right on the leaf itself so first thing i do is i mix this up with the water it's kind of thick so i will add a little more water to this not too much because i'm going to leave this on the thick side because i'm trying to coat this realistically i'm saying in one coat but that won't happen probably but we'll play with it and then uh let me make sure I got all the paint out of the brush and then I cleaned this out really well. Then I'm going to go into uh, the raw sienna and get this. This is a little more watery, just a little bit for the amount of paint I have in there. But I did that purposely so it would wet blend with the green. So I'm going to pick up my piece now. And I'm going to start painting. And I'm going to drag. And I'm, I'm starting to realize I said one coat. This ain't going to happen in one coat. It'll take a couple coats. So I'm going to... Maybe I got too much water in the mix to start. Which ain't helping. You can see how... It, sort of beads up a little bit. So uh, you got to play with the acrylic till you feel as though you have it just right. A lot of times I'll put one coat on. Oop, didn't want to do that. And then dry it and then put the second coat on. And, and now it has a setup of, uh, of a coating on there. Again, the acrylic paint will adhere to itself on the second coat much better than it does the first coat. So I was wrong in telling you doing a one coat. Unless you uh, really get the paint right, you, uh, you usually need uh, two coats. And, and I'm trying to not be too heavy with the paint for one reason. Uh, I want the paint to uh, flow nicely on here. And one thing you got to watch with acrylic paint is that it tends to uh, uh, build up. So I'm just trying to, and when you sweep through sometimes, it, it picks up more paint than, than you want. Now, I have this. 
like this. And I'm trying not to do any finger painting here. I'm going to get my hair dryer. I'm going to aim it away from the paint. I'm going to turn this thing on. And I'm going to try to dry this so you can see it. It may take a little bit because it's really wet. And I think to expedite things too, uh, I'll do just the one grass because you're doing the same step on each one. Okay? Now you can see I missed spots on here and I'm definitely going to need a second coat, maybe a third coat, but before I settle down on this green, we're going to put a little bit of another color in here too, which is that raw sienna that I said that I had mixed up earlier and we're gonna wet blend that in here too right now i just want to make sure this is really dry starting to feel the heat on my fingers <laughs> okay so now I'm going to rinse my brush out real quick. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the raw sienna and just apply it in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix it right away. I'm going to rinse my brush out in water. Come in here and pick up some of the, of the green. This is the sap green. And I'm going to try to wet blend the two, like so. Make sure you get the edges so you don't have copper showing on the edge. Flip this around to the other side. And sometimes if you have like forceps or something where you can, uh, what's the name, How to hold this, I do have them. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in a minute here. I get the raw sand on there. Then I come in with the green right over top of it. The, the wet blend these two together. And so that should do it there. I'm going to get that down further here. Probably won't see the bottom edge of this eventually. So that is going to be where we want to be. If you need to lighten this up a little bit more, you can add a little more of the raw sienna in there to get to the color you like for the grass. And I just play with it a little bit. And I like that, but I'm, I'm seeing some, what's the name, on the edges here, some copper. So you do want to get that copper covered. So again, I'm going to get a cup, lay that on there, and let that dry. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to do that for all the pieces I have here, okay? We have uh, this, this, and this one, and I will do the process for all four. So not to put so much time into it, I'm going to paint them all. I'm going to uh, coat them, like I said, with the sealer first. Let them dry and really let them dry so that that's that's attached and that may be uh you know an hour or two on the sealer if you want to 
hair dry it, you could probably speed up the process. Then you can start in the paint. And like I said, it's uh, sap green and raw sienna. And I put this on as the base coat uh, of, of that. And uh, probably it's gonna definitely need two coats, maybe three. If you're gonna see some of the copper coming through, uh, and this is too watery, I would go back to the tube, just take a little bit out, put it in there, and then apply it without being so thick. But you want to get rid of the copper that may end up on the edges here, and that could happen. So just to make it really look good, uh, don't leave the paint build up on it, okay? And again, I rinse my brush out after each time I use it, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I attach. Uh, I'm going to put this off to the side now. Uh, I'm sure I am. There we go. And I'm going to put these pieces off. And what I'm going to do now is attach the otter. Remember we talked about, uh, we, we made the grasses and I showed you how to make that. Now to attach this, uh, the best way I find out, I'm gonna pull this out. Remember we had the wire in here. Let me clean my fingers here. I still have some of the remnants of the grass color on me. Now, this is anchored down really good. I, I want to make a mix of five minute epoxy. And I have that right here. There's my five minute epoxy. And it takes five minutes to cure, so it doesn't take long. I'm gonna get just a little pad of paper here. I'm gonna get a little bit of five minute epoxy. Squirt it out where I can. A little drop of epoxy. And that's one part. And then it's a two parter. And I find these work out very well. This is the hardener, which is usually a little more, has heavier viscosity. So it doesn't come out as easy as the other one and I squeeze that out and it's equal parts so I get that out now I get a piece of wire and I stir these up now this will set up in five minutes. So I'm gonna just stir this up, mix it real good. And then this is the same size wire I use down here. So what I'm gonna do is plug that right into the hole. So it's got that five minute epoxy in there and I know I got enough and I'm gonna go right in here. You don't want excess if you can possibly help it because you, you don't wanna see the glue neither. Now, I'm gonna come along here and I'm gonna take this one out first. This paw, I took the wire out and I'm gonna plug this up right up in there. And I'm going to plug this up. Let me get this one out. Over here. Okay. And I try not to have too much excess all over. Okay, now that I got that all in there, I'm going to get this here, which was on a one leg air, and I'm just gonna make sure I got glue 
enough to surround that. I'm going to plug that in here. Right into there. And if there's excess sticking out, I'm going to take some of that off right at the moment. And then I'm going to get this one. Hide on me. I'm going to get this one. Just get enough around the whole wire, but not excessive. And then I'm going to plug that in. Now, you got that like that. Now, I'm going to come in, pick up a little bit of this. And like I said, you only have five minutes to do with this. So you can't piddle too, too much. And you only want to do so much gluing at a time. So now I got everything glued up. I got glue in a hole. I got glue in a wire. I'm coming over here. And... I pushed it. Must have missed something over here. Yeah. Come over here. Get that in the hole. There we go. Now what I've done is I've got them in there. And you don't see the glue, which is what we're trying to do. You don't want to see the wire. Oop. Guess what? my base came apart again so what i'm going to do you can see the glue i've been using wasn't holding it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix some more five minute epoxy and this stuff will hold better than the stuff i've been using and that was uh, what i was afraid of so I will get a decent amount out there. And I will get some of this here. Which is the same. Now, in the case of this, I'm going to get a pick to stir this. Or let's see what I could grab real quick here. I'm just going to mix it up with this, which is like a little spatula. And I'm going to work this all together here, even with the old stuff I had, because it hasn't set up yet. And I'm going to get this blob in there so that when it comes down, it's going to have a different glue, which I will hope is better than what I use. I should have used this in the beginning. It was okay for the rocks and the glue that I used that uh, tacky glue, but this will guarantee that uh, all this five minute epoxy will definitely do the job better, I think, than that tacky glue. Okay, so. I think we got most of it here. And I'll get this guy just to help dump that down in there. I'll get all the excess. Now, I'm going to pick up the otter. See if I could set that right back in there, like a glove. Now, I'm going to let that sit at least for like 10 minutes, even though it's a five minute epoxy, it does start setting up in five, but you know, you give it about a half an hour and that's anchored on really good. And, and everything, the, uh, the otter plus, uh, uh, the legs that were glued on plus the rocks will all be solidified and you won't have to worry about it coming apart again on you. Uh, the sand w will really grab well 
uh, with the tacky glue. So uh, that's not the problem. It's it's uh, you, you got to have this base anchored down really well, and that that's a key. Uh, the other thing I want to discuss with you is uh, on. Uh, this will be like a, a sideline thing that I want to approach with you that I uh, didn't have it done in a timely fashion, but I want to explain it to you. Uh, there's a baby associated with this, which is this here blank right here. Now, everything that I showed you on the adult is exactly the same, okay? This is a blank that we started with with the adult, but the legs are different, okay? We want to have variety within the setting. So uh, the legs are going straight back, and the poles are going down so that we could adhere that to the to the rock here okay and that that's a key so we had to have the feet up front on this now for the baby the baby's acting like it's swimming and we want it alongside so when you go to do this piece i do have uh markings for you for this piece and a pattern let me i'm going to slide this one out of the way. This is the pattern for the baby otter. And it has the measurements. They're a little bit smaller, of course, because it's a smaller head. Uh, and it's basically the same process that we did before with the adult. And this is all to scale, okay? And you, you with the patterns, you got the right side, the left side and the top side. And what I want to explain to you is, on this side here, what I've done is you're looking at this view right here, and this leg comes down, and it's going to be on this side of us. So I put a line up here and a little cut line in here, which is this right in here a little bit. And we're going to clean this out. This will be staying. This is going to go all the way across and stop right here. Okay, and that'll be the paw on this side. Now, when I cut the blank out, you have to step out beyond uh, where that was so I can preserve the this leg sticking out. So there's an area right in here that has to be trimmed. So it gets trimmed out, and I crosshatch this area here, and you take that back to where this flow of the neck comes up and in like this. And then the pole sticks out on this side. So you're going to re re you're going to take all this material out over here, and that'll go away, and the pole will stick out. Then down here, you take this comes back along the belly, and all this material comes out, and you have this pole stick out on this side. Okay, and then it's the same thing in the back. You know, as far as uh, the way we did the adult. We have the uh, legs coming in and the legs coming in. They're still the same. But you want to be able to uh, shape this exactly the same way, uh, rounding the tail. This comes all the way down. This is like a center line. And you build everything off of that center line, both top and bottom. And, and that's what we do here. So uh, in doing... Uh, the baby, it's going to look like this. And I'm doing uh, a smaller representation of it. I'm going to bring this 
into play. This is the, one of the finished ones I have. And this is even smaller than the ones we were working on. Now, what I do, and I'm going to show you, I, after I get done carving this, and you can see what I was talking about here, the leg is projected out here and back. And this one over here is projected out and it stops over here, but yet you got all this wood going across, so you got to clean that out. And then in the back, it's exactly like the adult, okay? And the shaping of it is is almost exactly the same way. The face is a lot more smaller. This one is even smaller than this here. You can see the size. I made a miniature of this, and this is much bigger. So, uh I shape this all up and I do the painting and everything exactly the same way. I use uh, uh, three millimeter eyes, the same as the adult, but I cover up uh, more of the eyes than anything else. And then I texture it the same way and paint it exactly the same way. When I'm done, then I drill a hole into the mother over here and I drill a hole into the baby over here and I put a wire in between and I use five minute epoxy again and then I slide this in and now you have what looks like uh, a pair mother and baby swimming together and you can position that and glue it into what you like and it makes a real pretty setting in that respect so uh i'm going to do that then the the last thing i do and i'm going to try to do this without actually having the piece uh if if i have uh say this is one of the grasses that i'm going to add to the setting and uh, I'm going to just get my piece and roll this around this wire this is after it's all painted and dried and everything else and like that and and then I'm going to go in and glue this in like in between rocks and put two of them together you know not just one but two and you get this look here and you want this outside of the where the mother is coming down uh, so that it'll stand up over here then i get and you can see it there okay i stick it back in the rocks and glue that down then over here i use the shorter pieces and stick them in the rock and i glue that with five minute epoxy as well Okay, and you try not to show that much glue. Try to get it on the ends and stick it in so it's not noticeable. And if it is, you could always get a little bit of sand. Uh, you get the tacky glue, put it down the bottom in there after you glued it in. It seems like it shows a little glue. And then sprinkle some sand in there, and it'll look like it's coming up out of the sand. So that's one way of hiding it there, too. So... This is the setting that we tried to achieve through our uh, setup here, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to try to do a bird next, and if anybody needs the patterns for this, uh, please contact me, and uh, I'm going to leave the information in there as far as if you need kits or the sheets the dimensions or whatever if you can take it off of this you're welcome to get it right from the screen uh i will uh if if you need any information at all just contact me i'll gladly try to help you out where i can and uh if you uh and again i use acrylic paints mostly in the whole process uh and uh, if you liked what you saw, I would appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up 
and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I hope this was informative that I can uh, take you on the journey maybe of doing like a bird. Uh, I've been working on different pieces along the way. A couple of them that I have right here that I'm working on right now is a, is a quail. And I'm in the process of trying to finish this. This was kind of an interesting piece to do. So I'm working on this right now. But I, I'm not sure uh, what bird I'm going to do yet. But uh, I'm maybe a cardinal. I'm not sure. But uh, it was, uh, I found that the otters, uh, if you look at the, uh, what's the name? Is, there's more intricate burning on this one. And then there's more intricate painting on this one, where the otter was uh, pretty much cut and dry. It's, it, it doesn't have that much uh, challenge. Uh, it's challenging enough, trust me. But I mean, it's not as difficult a painting as maybe a bird. And in, in a way I show you how to paint it, it, it there is uh, ways of, it looks difficult, but if you do it step by step, it, it, it comes out and you look this way. I, Like I said, I've taught classes for well over 30 years and everybody pretty much turns out the same thing every time because I have a step-by-step -step process I go through. Uh, I try to give you the stages on each one. Do not rush you, but I, wanna, I want you to learn. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the channel and and the challenge of doing the otter and the baby. And uh, if there's anything you may need, please contact me again. And uh, thank you again, and I'll see you on the next video.